Well, hello. I am so happy that you found me and that I found you. And today I'm jumping straight in, in it, uh, butt naked, both feet, don't give a care, waves splashing, Hurricane Sally hitting, doing its business, fires burning in how many states now? California, Oregon, Portland, Oregon is the most, has the worst air conditions right now. People are going to the hospital. They have to decipher whether it's coronavirus or irritation from the smoke. You can't see. You can't think. They're saying stay indoors if you must. You have to stay indoors from the pandemic. Now you have to stay indoors from the smoke. And now you have to evacuate and stay indoors from the hurricane hitting in the Gulf Coast with five more out there waiting to cross over from Africa. People, this isn't playtime. It's a shame that fear has to be, uh, happen to bring about change. And there's still the people who are not fearful. There are people saying that's what Portland, Oregon get for having the uh, uh, protest. And I have to say, if each one of us individuals got what we deserved from the life that we are living, it would be horrible. You would be on your knees crying. As they say, you'd be smudging ashes on your way, tearing your clothes, rending your clothes if you got what you deserve. So I don't know how people, when natural disasters happen or bad things happen, you have that soul train line, get on board. Aha, uh -huh, you got what you needed. The Lord is doing this and this and this to you. When your tail would have been gone, buried in the grave, as they say, if you got exactly what was coming to you from God. So I don't know what Christian can fix their mouth to say that. It is so easy to point at others when you have a dark heart instead of praying and saying, Dear Lord, deliver these people because there's tons of people who were not protesting that are affected by this smoke and the fires and losing their property. And I hope these people pay note to what happened when they're suffering, what their brothers and sisters in Christ say and do. And if it's you that said this or feel this way, Nanny, 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 like elementary school, that's what you get, ha, ha, ha. Now we're going to laugh at you while you're down, while you don't have anything. Just don't let the Lord turn his glance to your life and how you treat people and how you treat others because you already got a big strike, a big strike laughing at people in despair. So what else I want to say is it is I'm living in a time where I never thought America would become what she is today. When you have public officials telling people to get guns and bullets in case election doesn't go a certain way. The last time someone said get, get rifles, get guns, get ammunition, get bullets was the Civil War. Do anyone understand what Civil War means? It means I will pick up a gun and shoot my brother or sister to have what I want. You want the president to remain or you don't want a president to be in office. So you're going to just start shooting and causing a war. Do you know the death toll from this? Do you know how much it hurt families? Did you know how long it took back to get the male population back in order? And there are people sitting up trying to encourage you to kill people. And evidently it doesn't take a lot of encouragement. You have that already in your heart or the seed could not land and you contemplate it. You already have a dark heart. And these churches, I pray, I am absolutely praying that ministers will doctor and minister to these spirits, to these souls that have turned to where murder will be okay. And then you say, I'm protecting myself. Okay, why does someone have to tell you to get bullets and ammunition because of an election? Don't you protect yourself all other times? This is not a special time and place. Haven't you been tech protecting your home and family your whole life? No one should be telling Americans to pick up guns and bullets because of an election. I wish you would wake up. There is no cause 
There is no right fighting that tells you to kill. We have killed in Christian history. Then they run back after they made everybody Christians by browbeating them and killing them and putting them in jail and separating. And it's like, oh, that wasn't Christ-like. We had a little blip in Christianity. Ha ha, no one's perfect. We just, yeah, we got it wrong a couple of times when we were killing people and trying to force them to be under our control. But we... We won't do that no more. And you did it again. And you did it again. And you did it again. And look at now. What are you perpetrating now? Quit letting someone lead you to murder. You will answer to God, not the people in office. Sorry, you won't be answering to that little social group that sniggles and laughs and think they're doing something big. You will answer to God. And everybody's like, I do my little dirt, then I run and repent. Okay, I'm going to kill me six people trying to keep what I want to have power in the state and not let minorities come up or, or be. Then after I kill them, I'm going to run and repent. God sees your heart before you ever did. He knows your plan. Kill people, then go to church and repent. It's already known. I beg, I entreat you. I am praying and standing in the gap for you all. Do not do this. Do not listen to someone who wants you to go in the streets and start shooting while they don't have a gun. They're not out there in the street with people endangering their lives. They're not going to be separated from their family like you. They're not running a 50-50 chance of getting shot back. They're not running the chance of their homes and cars being destroyed. Do not let someone take you low. Do not let someone take you low. Turn your eyes to Jesus, please. Please. And you're like, well, there's politics and prayer. I know, I wrote the book. The Politics of Prayer. And I'm getting ready to just read you something that hopefully will change your mind, make you step back. Never, ever, ever in your life hook your wagon, associate, put your money down on Someone who is telling you to commit murder or assault, that is not good for you. They are not trying to get you to do something that's good for you and your family, that lifts you up, that takes you to a spiritual place of wellness, love, and peace. You know better. You know better. And you won't do better just because your heart is hardened and you want to do evil. Because in this world, in this time, people know what good doing good means. People know what doing evil means. You can dress it up and put lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig with lipstick. So God knows your heart. He knows right now what you're thinking and planning for election day. Okay? So let's not do that, that little thing of I'm going to do all the dirt I want to and then repent. You don't use God like eraser. You do not use God like an eraser. The contents of your heart are known and the contents knew you was going to try to play God trying to take a, a, a one up on him he won't he won't pay this no attention it's it's all good I do my dirt then I'm going to go to church and cry at the altar and ask for forgiveness for burning people houses down or shooting them as they drove by in a car or threaten them in public with a weapon. I'm going to repent of all of that and I am going to be forgiven. Your heart matters. You can repent, but you still got that funky heart. So, waiting for the next evil to do, the next bandwagon to jump on for harm. You're just waiting. That one done passed. You're going to be good, halfway good, until the next thing of, of evil come up that you're going to join yourself with. Mothers, I know the, the, the men in these families are gung-ho for fighting, for uh, power, for control. Don't let your children be raised this way. Women, you have a duty. You have a duty not to. Make a world where your children see this and grow to do this. Because I'm guarantee you, it always happened. The, the puppet 
puppeteer that's pulling the string, after he get rid of those that were a problem, he gets rid of those that did his dirty work. He can't have those people around thinking they somebody, thinking that, oh, now I'm special because I did this dirt for you. He don't want you either. He don't. The ones without the guns, the ones without the bullets are the ones that's going to be safe, that he likes, okay? It's not you. Everybody turn over on that. They even they call him white trash. The overseer had power over the black, but he was just as low. You are working in an overseer place. You are overseeing the minorities and the poor and the sick, and you have no power. You're just a foreman. You don't have a good house. You don't have uh, uh, stocks. You don't have yachts and cars. You don't have access to the best medical uh, attention that you could have, like Trump taking a test every day and all the people that want you to start a war is taking shots every day and care for it. You got two things. You got all these things happening to kill you. Your life is in danger. And what you want to do is be a person of malice. I don't know what kind of rational thinking that he is. But sometimes um, the wheat has to be separated from the husk and the shaft, whatever it's called. And I hope, I hope in the sifting that you are quality, that you are righteous, that you are fit, that you are good, that you are holy, that you are peaceful, that you are loving, that you are kind. Because why would our loving God and our Savior Jesus want to keep that is a bad seed that sh that uh, sows derision, that sh that's, that's corrupt, that's ego-driven, that takes care of no one but the dollar? You have been in church long enough to know better. And there's no excuse. And you're going to say, I'm still a work in progress. I, I'm not perfect. One damn thing you can be is not a killer. Do you really have, you have to be a work in process not to kill? Do you have to say, oh, I'm working on that murder streak I got. God, give me time. I'm going to get it straight. By the grace of the Lord, I'm going to quit killing and hating. Come on, come on. You're really going to try to cover that with I'm a work in progress. I, I just have to pick up my gun and walk around and threaten people because I'm a work in progress. Uh, evidently, you haven't even begun your work. You think God is doing the work on you? You haven't begun your work. If you think you're fooling God and going to do this stuff and run and repent like everybody else does. Thank God he said we can go and repent for everything. We are encouraged to repent. But those are sins known and unknown. We sin and that means we're going to turn from it, right? You're going to wait till all this over four and five and six months and then you're going to repent. After five and six months of this activity or a month of this activity or a week of this activity, you didn't repent on the spot or you didn't reflect and say, oh, my God, I was doing something wrong. I repent of this action and I'm going to turn away even while it's going on. It's easy to turn away when it's not going on. But are you going to turn away in the midst or before? Gather yourself, men. This is a chance to stand as a, a head of a household appointed by God over his home. And how, as me and as for me and my family, we would serve the Lord, right? It is time for you to take charge and so say, I will not lead my family into murderous thoughts, murderous acts, murderous deeds, anything that's causing harm over an election. This is the United States, the democracy that everyone has ever looked towards. And we ask them to be like us, loving, caring, and fair. And it doesn't exist anymore. Stop now, please. Can anyone get through to you and say, stop, we're not America anymore, and you're crying, uh, stand up for the flag, uh, pledge your allegiance to the flag, and you just, we're destroying it. As soon as someone is telling you to draw arms against your sisters and brothers, out loud, on the megaphone, with no shame, for an election, there's going to be some sifting and I pray and stand in the gap. I don't want anyone to fall for this. And as soon as he 
the person gets you to do everything they want, they turn a weapon on you. You're not equal. You're not a part. You're being used. You're a pawn. And I know you're smarter than that, and you can figure out how to get still. No one's saying give up what you believe in, but you can find a better way. God will direct you in divine timing in a better way than to f fight over an election. So I just want to read real fast from my book, The Politics of Prayer, which is available on Amazon.com. It's under $20, and I think it'll be inspirational. And it's not just my opinion. It's actually using the Bible and what it says about war and leadership and authority figures, kings, governors, and even the person in the state and how they're supposed to be, okay? But I'm going to read a few quotes and then I'm going to get off of here because you don't have to be long-winded or anything for someone to say, don't murder, don't pick up um, guns and ammo for the election against your own brothers and sisters in the United States. Two minutes. You know if you're right, doing right, you know you're doing wrong because that do not even sound right for someone to be telling you to buy guns and ammo because of an election. So you're willfully being ignorant, you're willfully sinning, you're willfully wanting to commit murder, you're willfully wanting to commit harm, and you come before a president, and he don't have to, he don't have to um, cater to you all no more the next 40 years. He just needed y'all to get him in there for four years, and he's going to do whatever benefits him. Do you really think now that he don't need you anymore, he's going to pay you any attention? No. Okay, ours is a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. We are a world of nuclear giants and ethical infants. America, ethical infants. We know more about war than we know about peace. More about killing than we know about living. We have grasped the mysteries of the Adam and rejected the Sermon on the Mount. And that's by Omar N. Bradley. And that is so profound. Ethical infants. Here's another one. Huh. To announce that there must be no criticism of a president or that we are to stand by the president, right or wrong, is not only unpatriotic and servile servants, servile, but is morally treasonable to the American public. That office was not created for all seeing, all powerful person to be there. That person is to serve us and the needs. And you see, we heard, and no one who is serving the population would tell parts of the population to get weapons. I don't know. And it says it's morally treasonable. Theodore Roosevelt said that in 1918. A president himself said that. This president has more inquiry, lawsuits, everything. And everybody keeps saying, well, you don't like him. That's We are not doing anything to him. If he wasn't if he was operating correctly, no one could be bringing suits against him. He don't have to fire. He don't fire anything that may not do. Come on, people. Like I said, it don't take forever. You know what's going on. And this is a, a psalm about anger. And I'm sure everyone is feeling anger. The one thing I keep hearing people say, oh, if they allow people allowed to protest in the street, we're allowed to eat in the restaurants and um, go to church. Absolutely right absolutely right those are closed in confined areas and outside in the street is different well the kids have parties but they bumping and grinding on each other they trying to hook up they doing everything to physically touch if possible you know what 20 year olds do late teen 18 19 they doing everything possible to t get a feel so it's very different uh than in the church but yes if it's done safely, you should. If people get carried away and they put on the back burner safety. This is a psalm about anger. Rescue me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who devise evil things in their hearts. That right there. Rescue me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me. From men who devise evil things in their hearts. They continually 
stir up war. This is a war being stirred up in the United States, a civil war. They sharpened their tongues as a serpent. Poison of a viper is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have pur purpose to trip up my feet. Tripping up your feet is taking out these uh, uh, post office boxes and equipment and making it hard to vote. I'm telling people to vote two times. Don't vote by mail. They have purposed to trip up my feet. The proud have, have hidden a trap for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set snares for me. And there are snares being set. October's going to be really rough. We're going to start seeing them in September. But, man, it's going to get some kind of crazy. But anybody that does that to someone, anybody that's making it hard for black people to vote or making it hard for white people to vote, making it hard for poor people to vote, it's making it hard. It's, if you make it hard on one demographic, it's hard on everybody. Okay? I said to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear, O Lord, to the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. And that's what we have to do. We know he's there for those who lean in him and cover him, cover themselves with him in the day of battle. These people that think they are going to have rifles and guns and uh, ammunition and be out here shooting and everything. Those who pray and follow what God has to say and live godly say, you have covered my head in the day of battle. So some of you are going to be shooting some people that God is just not going to be too happy with it. You have to take your hands off his people, okay? So don't bring upon yourself a curse. Please, just don't bring upon yourself a curse. Do not promote his evil device that they not be exalted. We don't want them to be up there exalted and win that do evil and think evil. And if someone is telling you to do wrong from a government standpoint is just not right as for the head of those who surround me may the mischief of their lips cover them so they're pretty much saying i hope what they're saying backfires on them you're trying to put it on me but i hope it comes back on you and cover you okay that mischief may burning coals fall upon him may they be cast into the fire into deep pitch from which they cannot rise. May a slanderer not be established in the earth. And our president is a slanderer. All the name callers and just trying to make those people um, into nothing. To, to worthlessness, you know. And people fall and call those names and do that to you. May a slanderer not be established in the earth. May evil hunt the violent man speedily. May the evil hunt the violent man speedily. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name. The upright will dwell in your presence. Do you hear what it said? The upright will dwell in your presence. Okay? That's Psalm 140, verse 1 through 13. I, I put it in my book, The Politics of Prayer. Psalm 140, verse 1 to 13. And that's for you when people are getting angry, like, how can this be happening? I'm angry. And that's a wonderful psalm to read. Instead of me out there hooping and hollering and, and trying to fight and shove. It don't take all of our great Martin Luther King said we can do uh, protest in love. We can voice our concerns with love and peace. I'm still that type of person. I praise God he gave me words where I can voice what I'm saying and that I don't have to be animalistic and attack and devour you to have. I have to kill you in order to have. No, I can have while you're still alive and living. And you can have while you, we don't have to destroy each other. Unless it's for corruption, because corruption will not stand. But you can destroy all the people you want to. It's right will not survive. 
Okay, I would like, this is in my book, page 194. I would like to give you 10 simple rules on how to pray, offered by Deanne Edward, president of the Hymn Society of America. And this was published in 1958. Since we have forgotten, we got, they having prayer services for Donald Trump, and we all as a nation should be praying from this day. And I say, please pray from this day till election. And, and, and on what will happen, that there's safety, that there's not civil war, that people are not shooting sister and brother, and that the Christian will rise into their office of what they're supposed to be doing and their fruits. I hope they're looking at the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts, and it don't have anything to what they're doing, okay? Number one, pray where you are. God is present everywhere and ready to listen. Pray where you are. God is present everywhere and ready to listen. Two, pray when possible in a quiet spot where you can be alone. It is well to fix your mind deliberately on God apart from confusing distractions. Purpose, do you hear that? Deliberately fix your mind on God with no distractions. You don't have to be there an hour, four hours, two hours, no time limit. But just take that time when it's just you and the peace of the Lord there. Three, pray to God simply and naturally as a friend. Tell him what is on your mind. Get help from the prayers of others, okay? Four, pray remembering the good things God has done for you. Reckon up your blessings from time to time and give thanks. Even these people that want to um, draw arms and ammunitions on for the election, they need to sit down and take time to see. Their lives isn't as messed up as they think. They need to focus and see what the Lord has done and, and the good things he's given them. Remembering. Remembering. Five, pray for God's forgiveness for the unworthy things that you may have done. And we are telling people that you pray every day, every night, pray anytime, anywhere. And that's what I said. How are you going to be on a killing spree or set to kill people for two months and then you repent? That was willfully and steadily sinning to harm your brother, to harm your sister, to harm your neighborhood, your community. Your family won't be the same after that. Okay? Pray for God's forgiveness for the unworthy things that you may have done. He is near to a humble and contrite heart. Humble. Watch prayers that are going to be lifted up throughout the nation and see if it's a humble, contrite heart. Pray for the things that you need, especially those that will make your life finer and more Christ-like. Being a Christian means we follow Christ and we want to be holy and Christ-like. That's the work we put in each day to be Christ-like. Other things you're fighting for, God will handle those. If you live and you be that example of following Christ, living Christ-like, bringing people through your witness and through your example to the church body, building up the church of Christ, and spreading the gospel. That is your job. There are things that matter and you vote, but in everything you're doing, you draw, Christians draw people to Christianity. That was your acts commission, to go out, build up the church, edify people, and enlarge the church. You spreading the gospel. What we spread now, I have no idea, but we involved in so much more. Uh, I don't know who we left out, the device of other people's spirit that are watching us, okay? I hear newscasters say, I'm a Christian, like, I carry God like on a stick. I got God, I got God, I'm a Christian. Then sit there and call people demeaning names. Sit there and lie and get millions of followers. Filth in, filth out. Trash in, trash out, Okay? Mainstream media lies, okay? But no one is sitting there spouting derogatory stuff, name calling, cursing, lying, trying to own the Lord, saying that you are the, like the people and you're a multimillionaire and steady selling books on your show. You are nothing like the, we the people. But you could only plant that seed 
in the soil that it's ready to grow in. So you're just taking part, you're just taking advantage of, of, of people searching for evil. And they found it and they hold on and they latch to it and don't care about anything else. It's splitting up families last season. They said people couldn't be at the Thanksgiving table or Christmas table because of politics. Christ-like. If you were living trying to live Christ-like, you would notice this abomination of hate, of racism, of evil against the poor. Okay? Pray for others, remembering the situations they confront and the help they need. Help they need. In my book about um, poverty kills the spirit, it was said that people look at the poor and they actually condemn them for being impoverished. If you weren't lazy, if you didn't have all those children, if you got an education, you wouldn't be poor. They can point and blame them for their poverty, but they will not point at them and give them what they need to not be impoverished. There's a big difference, isn't it? You like, I can't save the world. Oh, you can tell them about a job somewhere. You can tell them, oh, this educational program. You can give people what they need if you're interested in the state of being. If their state of being is just bringing America down, bringing the suburbs down, bringing everything down, all you have to do is give a person what they need instead of condemning them for who they are and what they don't have. Pray for others, remembering the situations they confront and the help they need, okay? Pray for the world and its needs. Asking God to bring better things and offering your help to them. you praying for God to bring better things and you're trying to be a part of that solution also. you asking for peace. Be peaceable. you asking for the government to function right. You be right. Whatever it is you're asking of the world, God brings better things and offering your help to them. How can I be a part of this? Okay? Pray above everything else that God's will may be done in you and in the world. And that's probably where we have gotten detached. And politics and uh, prayer and politics and religion have gone astray. We're praying just for what it we want it to do. Do this, do this, do this. But say, pray above everything else that God's will be done in you and in the world his purposes are deeper and wiser than anything we can imagine and i said um it took me a long time to say those three words i was afraid of them and i said i'm afraid but i meant it lord use me lord use me and if you're saying lord use me i'm sure he will not be telling you get some ammo and gun to be prepared to fight for the election. Lord, use me. 10, pray, and then start answering your prayer. I like that one. Pray, and then start answering your prayer. All right, I went longer, of course, like you say, I always say I want, went longer than I wanted to go, okay? Here's a quote to say, if you lie to people to get their money, that's fraud. If you lie to people to get their votes, that's politics. And, and, and people back in politicians, you understand that, right? In national politics, it's not so much how you play the game as it is to who's keeping score. Trying to see some more. Politics is the art of obtaining money from the rich and votes from the poor on the pretext of protecting each other from each other. I love that. Politics is the art of obtaining money from the rich 
and votes from the poor on the pretext of protecting each from the other. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Separation of church and state could hardly be more complete. The church teaches that money isn't everything. The church teaches money isn't everything. And government keeps telling us it is. And that's a quote from E.C. McKenzie. Oh, my book is just so full of wonderful things. I can go on and on and on. Get this book, The Politics of Prayer. It's not meant to be one-sided. It's meant to be God-sided. Uh, and what he has, there's no agenda in there other than uh, what the Sermon on the Mount, uh, the Gospel, uh, and whatever it is that's needed to edify and build the church. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time to tune into this video. I hope it makes a difference. I hope that it's spread around and shared. Please share it, share it, share it, share it to election day. Let us all pray. And stand in the gap and intercede that there be no violence, that there be no corruption on this election, that we do our best to stay Christ-minded and Christ-like, to do our part, even if everybody else is not doing theirs, that we do what we must because it is us individually be judged by the Lord. May we continue to live as we want the world to be. It says, pray for what you want, then make it happen, okay? All right, so thank you once again. Um, subscribe, like, share. I like hearts, comments. I like comments too. But I just really wanted to just weigh in on this when I heard someone was saying get guns and ammunition because of the election. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy on us, okay? Take care. I love you in Christ. Once again, thank you. And remember to pray.